systematic literature reviews were first introduced in the 1970s in the medicine field, and we have since seen a continuous improvement of the methodology in that field. So today, literature reviews constitute an important building block in the medicine field, where we see some of the leading journals publishing about four reviews in every 10 articles as reviews. So when we now turn our attention to the leading journals in our field, we see that only a fraction of articles that are published are reviews. In our article, we claim that one of the reasons for this observation is that many of these reviews are challenged by the current ontological and epistemological idiosyncrasies of our field, making the retrieval, the selection and the synthesis of studies highly difficult. When we talk about ontology and epistemology, we refer to the basic assumptions about reality and the grounds of creating knowledge. And we identified six characteristics of SEM research that should be accounted for when conducting an SLR. First of all, SEM is a divergent discipline with a steady stream of emerging research questions that are investigated through a wide range of borrowed theoretical lenses. And this theoretical divergence influences how findings concerning, concerning certain phenomena are interpreted. Second, the unit of analysis is often unclear and may vary greatly. It could involve anything from a single dyadic linkage between a manufacturer and a retailer to a network including all upstream and downstream actors. Related, the sources of data may also vary between studies, which could explain differences in study findings. Uh, data can be collected horizontally from a single entity or multiple entities along the supply chain. Meanwhile, data can be collected from multiple levels, such as individuals, business units, or firms. Fourth, findings in SEM studies are often attributed to contextual conditions, for example, influences of culture and industry sector. And considering the dynamism of the discipline, we cannot expect to, theories to remain stable across time and space. Fifth, while many studies at first glance seem to have investigated similar phenomena, they often turn out to have relied on different definitions and inconsistent scales. And finally, regarding research methods, we have seen an empiricism modeling dichotomy in the SEM field with little academic effort to bring the knowledge of both streams together. So, what we can conclude is supply chain management is certainly different from medicine. And this is why current methodological guidelines need to be adapted. We took the typical six steps for a systematic review from previous method articles and adapted it to our discipline. Step one is to define the research question. Here, an initial theoretical framework is defined that will later be refined in the light of the retrieved literature. The next step, step two, is to determine the required characteristics of primary studies needed to help us refine the initial theoretical framework. In step three, we now retrieve a set of potentially relevant literature called the baseline sample through searches of keywords or better by combining a keyword search with other search strategies. Researchers should be aware of sampling biases that can occur in this step. Step four is about selecting the literature from the baseline sample to identify those studies that truly help to refine the initial theoretical framework. Based on what we have learned from the idiosyncrasies of our discipline's research, we need to reach a finer sample of studies that can truly be synthesized to develop our new refined theoretical insights. Also here, selection biases can occur and should be reduced if possible. What needs to be done now is to synthesize all these studies. This is done in step five, where outcomes of the studies are compared. To do so, two data extraction structures are needed. The first one covers each aspect of the theoretical framework. So here we extract the study findings based on the relationships between variables in the initial framework. The second one contains the study artifacts. That concludes the unit of analysis the source of data, the study context, definitions and construct measures, as well as research methods. The goal is to integrate all the data to refine the theoretical framework. 
In other words, we determine what works for whom, who, and under what circumstances. We can now develop propositions to express our new the theoretical insights. Finally, in step six, the results are reported. To support evidence-based decision-making, the original SLR methodology in medicine emphasizes on the need of having multiple replication studies on the same phenomenon. Replication studies are, however, largely absent in the SEM field, where we see a continuously new stream of research questions emerging, but we avoid any sign of repetition. So to truly enable knowledge development in our discipline, we need to strive for more transparency, replicate studies, reuse measurement scales, and converge to a thorough of definitions. So we hope that with this article, we have contributed to overcoming some of these challenges and pushed our research closer to the frontier of current methodological standards.